let your collaborators know. The right to people. Get to know people. Make personal connections. This is not how it normally happens. For my case, it's, it's more random. This is really, really important. Go for job talks that might be happening in the department. It's your talk. Be yourself. My advice will be terrible. Uh, so for postdoc, I applied to a fellowship with uh, specific people and was fortunate enough to receive a fellowship. Um, so these were people, again, I guess like going back to yeah, networking, these were people I knew, I guess I'd worked with Rachel um, but once before, uh, but you know, uh, but Rachel and Stefano, I, I mean, I've worked with Rachel once before, but really, you know, I like, I really like both of their work, uh, but it's not, but I knew them more socially, actually, because we, you know, run into each other all the time at conferences and hang out, and I just thought, you know, you guys are really great. Uh, so yeah, we applied to this fellowship together. Um, yeah. I think it's important, I guess, okay, so I guess what I would say, I think, what I think is very important in this is to make personal connections. So I, I feel like there are postdocs that you can apply to where it's like they just have sort of open applications and stuff like this. I'm not saying don't do that, but I would, I personally would shy away from that if I didn't have some particular person at the university that I had a connection with and I felt would wanted to work with me and would advocate for me. Um, before, yeah, to invest time in into, it's like takes a, it's a big time commitment to apply to things. Um, and so it's important to make sure it's, to, to try to have some support in this process, I think. Um, to, for it to be successful with a good chance. Um, and for this reason, it's important to, to, to know people and to get people to know you. So like really, yeah, I don't know. Like the groundwork should have already been laid. We should have been traveling and giving, trying to give talks uh, telling your advisor you want to give talks at uh, other uh, seminars and stuff like this so people really get to know who you are um, you meet lots of people uh, and then then when it comes time to apply everyone hopefully people will know who you are and uh, and be excited to work with you because they've heard about all this other cool stuff you've been doing um, uh, yeah and also you get to know who you want to work with by, by talking to lots of people. I think it's very tricky. Uh, yeah, with academia, with the job markets, I don't, I don't know. I think again, it's helpful to, if you know someone in the department uh, who, so you really know what's going on, what you're getting, what you're getting into that can, you know, fight for you. Um, again, yeah, I think, I think that like, you know, of course merit matters a lot, but I think it's important to, to like, but personal connections can be really, really valuable. And I think in a way that's like not actually destructive. I think there's this danger of like nepotism or, you know, something like this, like, you know, sort of uh, biasing towards people that you already know. And this is a danger, uh, of course, you may be rejecting people just because you're not familiar with them. Um, but, uh, and this is a tragedy. But uh, uh, but you should try to put yourself in a position where you could use these personal connections so people know that they, they have some sort of trust. Because it's like very hard to evaluate these things. Job market, postdoc, is he going to be successful? Like look at his track record or her track record from before. And like, you know, like how do you trust that things are going to work out? Uh, it basically comes down to, you know, Sometimes I think it comes down to like a gut feeling ultimately more than anything else, uh, you know. I mean, I think people aren't aware of like how political and 
like there's all these other dimensions it's not just like did you do good work did you do like like the best work relative to everyone else like it's like the first of all doesn't it make sense as a question um uh, and and there's so many other considerations factoring in um that yeah that the only way to sort of to sort of get a handle on it is is with the like, like deep relationships with people well i think that that one thing that that helped me is first watch other uh give uh job talks and you know try to get an impression of what is a good uh job talk and and you would be able to tell um and and you know there are plenty of, of job talks uh online uh for you to access uh another thing is you know you should give this talk to as many people as you like as, as you can and obviously you want these people to be also like you know uh, outside your field, uh, certainly outside of cryptography, you know, and in, in theory, but also beyond that, right? You're talking to a general uh, audience and, and you want to get uh, their advice. Uh, but remember, like people will give you a lot of advice, but remember that at the end of the day, it's your talk, okay? And uh, eventually you may know what is best. And still, it is good to sort of like uh, uh, take in all the advice. Some of this advice could be very valuable for you. Okay, but also be confident. Okay, you know uh, uh, what you want to say, um, so uh, uh, so do it. Another thing is, um, I guess, answering questions um, is an art. Um, it's pretty difficult, and this is something that you should and, and you can practice. In particular, when you when you uh, talk to people, do encourage them like ahead of time. Tell them to ask you difficult questions. Okay. Um, and, you know, one last thing is uh, like, you know, uh, uh, being on the job market could be extremely stressful, but I want to say that it could also be uh, fun. Okay. It's, I think it's a, it's a very interesting experience. Uh, and in particular, you get to meet people that you wouldn't have uh, met otherwise. Um, and, and for me, I must say it was uh, pretty exciting. Like I, I, I totally enjoyed it even with the stress and everything. So, you know, just try to ride this wave and uh, and enjoy it if, uh, if you can. Let's see. So I think this is maybe like a point for PhD. Uh, it's, uh, it's very random. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, guess, I, I guess for my case, it's, it's more random because uh, uh, I kind of apply rather really officially uh, and broadly uh, to many places. Uh, uh, the year before I graduated, uh, and, and part of the reason was that I I, I kind of uh, focus more on my, my crypto in, in my later years in PhD. Uh, so it's not like uh, in I think in many other cases maybe uh, in the late time of their PhD they already kind of know the community well, and then they have. Uh, opportunity and then maybe they already have a lot of interaction with uh, with uh, people in in that field and then maybe they they would uh, find a good place where they even already have a collaboration with um, but but for my case uh, um, I just uh, apply widely um, I think at that time somehow uh, there were also more uh, maybe official post positions around by, I don't remember, maybe CIA or uh, there, there was some, some uh, maybe NSF funding or Simon's funding for the post uh, So they are more kind of official position to apply to. To be honest, uh, uh, in my case, they came to me. Um, I mean, uh, Yes, uh, uh, I mean uh, uh, that. Uh, yeah, I uh, personally looking looking back, I was not too focused where I want to go. Um, sort of 
things really, uh, really just happened. Like the uh, two postdocs uh, pos positions that I held, I didn't apply there. Actually, uh, um, member uh, members of these groups just reached out to me and uh, asked asked me to. Yeah, it's uh, in, in, in retrospect. Yeah, uh, this is not how it normally happens. I mean, but but again, uh, knowing people, right? Getting get get getting to know people, getting into conversations and conferences which is sadly not happening right now right uh, uh, but that that really um, really helped uh, uh, seeing that I mean back then these these really great and important names that you read on all these papers are very approachable uh, people and very very nice on a personal level I mean this is um, this 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 helped a lot and uh, then bonding with some of these people uh yeah for, for, for me that just resulted say in um in these job opportunities good i mean that's a a pretty uh, loaded question i think that uh, a in terms of finding a job um one strategy that's perhaps the absolute right one is to really go up is, is is timing the market in a sense Right, so when you feel like you're completely ready uh, to graduate uh, and, and go on the job market, I mean, I'm thinking of postdocs and uh, uh, PhD as you know, postdoc just as being an extension of the PhD that you might have done. Uh, you know, either when you're graduating or after postdoc, whenever you feel like you know you're already at a sense um, uh, have interesting research papers, um, the community knows you. Uh, the, the, the topic you're working on is exciting, you can motivate it well, uh, you have things in the pipeline, so you have future research that, uh, is that, that you can tell people about and, and would be exciting. Um, I think that's, uh, uh, um, that's very uh, important to, to figure it out in terms of the timing. In terms of uh, preparing for the job interview, um, I think it's uh, this is something that starts quite a bit earlier. Um, it, it's useful for students, to, uh, senior PhD students, to go for job talks that might be happening in their department to get a sense of what job talks are like. Try to see what's good about them and uh, try to inculcate uh, similar aspects in, in their own uh, talks. And I think it can be very useful in uh, those aspects. Uh, you know, maybe you feel like your uh, there's something missing in your talk and to strengthen your sort of job talk um, uh, you might end up pursuing new research agendas uh, to to give a more coherent story or a more coherent um, uh, way of approaching your research so i think that that's something can be very useful uh, for students in terms of preparing uh, job talks and and you know job talks that again i'll go back to what i said earlier to have a sing, you know, crisp message about what you can do uh, are, are, are things that uh, uh, I think are quite uh, good. So if you can say in a single sentence, this is what I did, uh, I think that's hard to do. Well, that's, uh, that's a tough question. Um, it's, it really depends on, on the kind of research uh, you're doing. You should really, really, um, talk to senior people before you apply anywhere um, to uh, ask for their advice, um, which places you should apply for and um, which people in each place you should uh, contact uh, so they will help you with the process within that place. Um, I, can, I can say how to, I mean, my advice follows for uh, a faculty positions. I'm not, um, I, I don't have any experience of, uh, of finding an industry uh, uh, job, but uh, I think for postdocs in our community, it's much, much easier um, to just contact the, the person you want to visit. And it's mostly a matter of funding usually. Um, and um, writing or preparing a good job doc, this is really, really important. You really need a job talk that is will impress people. It must be a talk that is um, is not technical, is hardly technical, 
but still um, convinces people that it's super hard and super difficult. So there's a very, very like, um, it's a line that you need to play uh, with um, because if it's super technical, people are going to, you're going to lose the audience. If it's non-technical at all, people would think it's trivial. So really, really need to balance your talk and you really need to talk about the impact of your research. People care about that. Uh, I mean, theoreticians in our community, they, they respect and understand that, of course, the, um, the, 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 the impact and the importance of what we do in crypto. But usually when you give a job talk, you're talking about people from other areas. And they sometimes have very, very basic and fundamental questions. So you should aim for these people to support so that you will support later your application. Well, uh, finding jobs, we all know that, right? You, you, you check the internet, you talk to colleagues, um, you know, you, you, you work your network, you um, ask your advisor, fellow students. Um, I want to talk maybe a little bit about the um, actual job interview because that's, that's maybe not quite as obvious. I think it's uh, important to do your homework. So really look, um, particularly for faculty position, what is the department um, you're applying to? Um, and and uh, you probably know how a particular what, what we call US style interviews work. So you spend a day or one and a half days um, at the university and you typically meet which, with a bunch on people on one to one to addition, uh, in addition to typically a research talk. And I think these one to ones are maybe um, the most critical ones. Um, and again, you have to do your homework, uh, look at the people in the department, what they're doing, um, and often you get a pretty good sense whom you're go going to meet. And um, I think my, my big advice, if you're in the one-on-ones, and I had that once or twice in my life, you know, being on the receiving side, being the candidate, um, be yourself, be natural, uh, you know, be, be likable, right? Be, be yourself, it typically works. Um, show interest so don't overdo it with you know presenting all the cool stuff you can do but uh, also listen what they are doing and um, what I always find interesting when I interview people um, uh, uh, come up maybe with ideas how you could uh, relate to their work how you could maybe work collaboratively but again listen what they have to say and, and maybe uh, try to ask uh, smart questions uh, without overdoing it and again be personable you know, try to relate to people. Regarding the postdoc, I think it's very important to let your collaborators know uh, that you're looking for a postdoc and approach also faculty uh, with whom uh, your research aligns and see if they have funding to support you uh, and how to prepare for a faculty job in academia. Actually, I never applied uh, in academia and uh, the type of interviews that we get in industry, they're very different. In my case, uh, I was not interviewed by cryptographers, so I had to prepare a talk which is very high level and at the same time explain um, the importance of uh, uh, my research, my PhD research and my postdoc research. Uh, so I think I would say it depends on the audience. For the industry, you just have to explain your ideas in a simple way um, to people who actually never heard about it before. Um, and the last advice that I have, but in general this is a, a, a big topic of discussion, is to be yourself uh, and be relaxed. Um, so I think all three of them, postdoc, uh, faculty and research uh, in industry, have a little bit of a different approach. But one common thing for all of them is to get to know people who work in the particular institution where you are applying. You really need to have uh, some champion from inside to increase your chances. So people should know your work, they should know you, they should feel excited about having you uh, in their institution. And that's something that is extremely important no matter where you're applying. Um, I think for postdoc positions, it's much more focused on your specific technical abilities because you're usually talking to a specific professor who should already know your work and uh, in 
oftentimes it's much more informal. You don't necessarily have the same uh, formal interviews and process as with the other positions. Uh, when you're applying for a faculty position or full-time research job at an, at an industry, you need to understand that you are targeting a much broader audience uh, who are not necessarily people in your research area. So you need to be able to give a talk that uh, is informative and interesting to a much broader audience. And you should convince these people that you're somebody that is doing great work, but it all would also be a great colleague with whom they can potentially collaborate. Um, my advice will be terrible. I can tell you this in advance. So um, I've had a few job interviews in academia. And so the job that I got in Nijmegen and now the job that I got in Bochum, um, the interviews were both virtual. Uh, well, the one for, for Bochum simply because of the pandemic and because everybody was in home office. When I applied in Nijmegen, actually, um, I was traveling. I was in, in Latin America at the time for a conference. And they invited me for an interview. Um, on a specific Friday and asked me what time would be convenient for me. And so I said, well, that's the day when I'm traveling back to Taiwan. I'll have a 30 hour flight. I will arrive at um, around 11 in the evening, which is 4 p.m. for you. So um, and then they said, so would you prefer 4 p.m. or 430? And so after this 30 hour flight, I arrived in my apartment. I dropped my bag and I went into the job interview and I was basically assuming that they wouldn't hire me anyway, that I was just, you know, on the list because they, they need to fill the list because otherwise you don't interview somebody after just a 30 hour flight in the middle of the night for them. And um, then I crashed for the weekend and Monday morning, I got an email saying that I'm first on the list that they would like to offer me the job. So in the interview, I was just bluntly honest in all the questions. I didn't even think about if, you know, this would be strategically smart to say, or if somebody could misinterpret this. I was just like, really like, Attitude is you're not going to hire me anyway. This is clear from the beginning. And then, yeah, so that's how I got to that, that job. And um, yeah, in, uh, in Bochum, now at MPISP, um, it was, oh, I was, uh, I went through it before. I think it makes sense to have, um, to go through your job talk with experienced people beforehand. So I did this for the, for the interview in Bochum. I did actually not do this for the talk uh, in, in Nijmegen. I wrote the slides on the flight. Um, it, and then it, I think the, the very, very important thing, and this, this may, may sound like everybody should know this anyway, but try to get information about the group that you're applying to, be, know who's there, know what they're working on, and try to know who's on your committee and know what they're working on. So I've seen this a few times when I was on the other side, when I was interviewing. And we asked, so who could you imagine working with and then what kind of topics? And then there was just silence. And this is just be prepared, basically. Do your homework when you, when you go into job interview and be honest. Um, in the end, a job interview always goes both ways, right? So um, if you're being really honest and people don't hire you because of that, then probably that means it's a job you wouldn't have wanted. Anymore. Um, so write to people, <laughs> ask people. <laughs> that's my only that's my only advice especially for faculty jobs sometimes people um just see the listings the posting and 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 apply um if there's anyone in the department that you know um even vaguely just someone who's in the another cryptographer you might not know them that well personally but you know they would know your name or uh it makes sense to write for postdocs usually there aren't like formal posting, so people write anyway. That's the only way to even find out if there's postdocs positions available. Um, sometimes for faculty jobs, people just click the, you know, there, there, there's a posting somewhere and they just apply through the, through this portal. And uh, I know being on the on the other side on the ser on search committees, you get so many applications. It's very easy. I'm not always if I'm not on the search committee, I might not even look through all of them, and I might miss. If there's, uh, let's say, cryptographer that would be excited about that's applying, I may not not, not uh, notice. So <clears throat> it's um, it's much better if, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> if I get an email. 